A lifelong resident of Riverside, Comptroller-elect Judy Barr Topinka today returns to public service, becoming the first woman in Illinois history to be elected to two statewide offices. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Comptroller-elect Judy Barr Topinka, escorted by her son Joseph Barr Topinka and her friend and longtime aide Bobby Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, Comptroller-elect Judy Barr Topinka and Joseph Barr Topinka, who will deliver the oath of office. Okay, okay Mom. <laughs> Take a big, big, big breath. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. Yes, sir. I, Judy Barr Topinka. I, Judy Barr Topinka. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support the Constitution of the United States of America. To support the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the State of Illinois and the laws thereof. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois and the laws thereof. And I will diligently discharge the duties of the Office of Comptroller. That's getting awful long. <laughs> Wait, say it again. And I will, excuse me, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Comptroller. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Controller. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help you God. So help ye God. Mom, God bless you, I love you. Thank you. Well, now, that was a little homegrown product. <laughs> First, let me say, it is good to be back. <laughs> and I do want to uh, thank my son, Major Joe, here for swearing me in today. You know, he, uh, for those of you who may not know, is an active member of the military. He's a major in the United States Army, and I'm very proud of that, very proud of that. And to top it off, you know, he's a member of the Judge Advocate Corps and works out of something called MedCom, which takes care of Army hospitals. So he takes care of those who are hurt, who are sick, and the ones that we have to provide for when they come home. So I'm very, very proud of what he does. You know. Last year had, had wonderful events. I won the election, and I was so thrilled. But to top it off, my son, whom I call Pepe, and his wife, Christina, made me a first-time grandmother, and I became a bubby. So there we are, and uh, Christina is still in uh, San Antonio, Texas, with the little one. Her name is Alexandra Faith Bar Topinka, and uh, she's quite a gal. In fact, uh, Joe just mentioned that if I keep running for office long enough, she may one day be able to swear me in. <laughs> so that's a little something for you to think about all the way around. First, I want to give a special thank you to really one of the classiest and most dedicated public servants I've had the opportunity to work with, Dan Hines. Dan Hines, a great controller. Now, he set the bar in the toughest of times, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for the work that he did. He's going to be a hard act to follow, but we are going to build on his shoulders and take it from that point on. I also want to thank Bobby Stevens, who held the Bible today and stood in for Christina. Bobby has been a longtime friend, longtime employee, and uh, she once answered a blind ad, and that's how she came to me, and she's been with me for well over 20 years. And God love her, she's just a good soul for putting up with me for this long and doing all the hard work. So thank you, Bobby, for holding the Bible. <laughs> 
I also want to thank a, a gal who has been very intrinsic to our campaign, to the running of when I was treasurer, that running that office, uh, making sure that everything works well. Uh, she's like a combination of the mom that I have lost and missed terribly much, a sister that I never had, a good friend and a very hard worker, and the political guru of our operation, Nancy Kimmy. She's probably hiding out there now because she doesn't like to be acknowledged, but she has it coming. She earned it. Well, I, I think we see that things have gone swimmingly in my absence. You know, running to be fiscal officer of a financially strapped state, it kind of makes you wonder, what is she thinking? Uh, yeah, okay. Well, let me tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's time to put aside any petty bickering and certainly any partisan fights, roll up our sleeves, turn this state around, because state government, unfortunately, has gotten out of touch and out of control, and it is time to bring it back. You know, that's... Uh... Now, it would be convenient and in some cases very satisfying to blame one party or one administration for the mess that our state's in, but frankly it wouldn't be true because both parties have for a very, very long time have helped dig this dish. You know, we're all responsible. And since we all dug, it's time that we got together to find the courage, the will, and the civility to pull ourselves out of that ditch and make Illinois great again. You know. Now, that means a lot of things, but most of all, it means we have to stop playing games with taxpayers' money, okay? No more games, cut it out. That means no more arbitrage schemes, pension holidays, binge borrowing, sweeps and raids, because none of them have solved our problems. So it's down to just really getting at it. Right? They've made these situations worse, much worse, and we need to put an end to those games and play it straight. Straight up, just the way you run businesses, just the way you run homes, time for government to do the same. We need to summon the will to make tough choices. Some of this is not going to be easy because the problems are huge, huge. And we're going to need to disagree sometimes without being disagreeable, okay? We need to find a way to work together to make things right. Now, the people up here on the stage are without exception good and honorable people. And there's no doubt that we're going to have policy disputes from time to time. But I feel confident that we're going to be able to work them out because we're going to be adults. And that's something that I think we bring to this administration all the way across the board. We've got adults, finally. It's all exciting. So we can do no less. This is truly a critical moment in Illinois history. And it's going to take all of us pulling together to restore that trust and prosperity to this state. I'm delighted to have as my fellow fiscal officer, former senator, now treasurer-elect Dan Rutherford, because we work together, we must work together, and it's a comfortable, good, solid relationship. I think you will be well served. So it's time to fix this state. It's my guy. It's time to fix this state because I am not going away until we do. So that should scare you, okay? <laughs> Thank you, our work begins today. God bless you all. God bless Illinois and America.